All right, in this screen recording, I'm going to do some editing to a model that I took a picture of quite a while ago. Um, we're going to do some cleanup of her skin and stuff. She's got a bunch of bruises. And then we're going to, I don't know, maybe do some stuff that a lot of photographers seem to be doing with their editing now. Kind of like, uh, I don't want to call them Instagram effects, but they kind of are in a way a lot of like cross-processing and adding almost like light leaks to the image and stuff like that. So we're going to get started by opening up this picture. Um, I usually shoot in RAW, so I have a lot of pre... Uh, I guess you call it pre-editing that I can do with the uh, Adobe Camera Raw. Um, so we'll go through some of that. Um, one nice thing about it is if, if you are the one taking pictures, if you kind of overexpose it a little bit, you can adjust that to an extent. Um, obviously you don't want to blow it out, but let's get it to like a happy medium and leave it about there. You can boost the contrast if you want. I usually don't. Um, let's see. We'll just get this kind of looking how I want it to, and then we'll start with the editing part. Um, sometimes it's fun to play around with the white balance and see if it's off from what you want it to be. You can also choose an area, like her shirt is white. Mm, too bright, okay. Well, let's see. Um, one thing I might try, I didn't do this before. I've edited this picture before. And I can, um, maybe I'll put up the the after at the end of the video just so you guys can see it. But it seems like a, a really common thing that I'm seeing a lot of is people doing split toning where they'll kind of make the shadows more of a blue. And that's what I'm doing right now. And then the highlights kind of more of a yellow. And that just gives it a different feel. I don't know if I really like it on this picture, so I might not do it. But let's get started with the editing. So, first thing that's completely obvious to you is look at all these bruises. So, we're going to start off by getting rid of some of those. Um, one thing we can do is get rid of some of the hair strands too. We might do that and then we'll do some other small things like getting rid of this tree branch. Doesn't really need to be there. Maybe we'll add some cool looking clouds in the background just give it more of like a cool feel since the image is pretty plain in the background as it is. So let's start with these bruises. Um, actually, first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the layer. And the reason I'm duplicating it is if I do what I'm about to do and don't like it, I can easily either do erase part of it or just delete the whole layer. There's always the undo button, but you only have so many undo actions that you can do. So I rather just create a whole new layer and start from there. Um, First thing I'm going to do is sharpen it up a little bit. I use the unsharp mask. It seems to work pretty well. You can over sharpen an image. And one thing you want to think about is if you're going to be printing it out, you don't want to sharpen it too much because you'll notice it in a bad way. Um, so, sorry. Um, I think that's probably good. You, you can see the difference, but it's not too much. And that's what I'm looking for. So there's that. And with the clone stamp tool that I'm going to use to get rid of the bruises, I'm going to create a new layer so it doesn't affect the layer below it. And it'll sample from current layer and below. You can select current layer, which it's not going to, not going to do anything. So current and below, it'll sample from the current layer, which has nothing on it, and the one below it, which has the picture. So, let's start with that. You can also try using the uh, spot healing brush. Um, usually it works all right. I, I prefer the clone stamp tool. I don't really know why. I'm just kind of used to using it, I guess. I feel like you have a little more control of what happens. One thing you can also do is turn down the opacity if you want to kind of blend a little more of the shadows and highlights and stuff so it looks a little bit more natural. Um, that's basically what you want to try to do is 
cover up the bad spots, but make it look as natural to its surrounding as you can. So let's see, that looks kind of like a bruise, almost a shadow, but let's see. Got one on the shin. Let's get rid of that. Now, when you turn off this layer, you can obviously see the difference a little before and after. And I think that's good enough. I mean, I'm not going to be making this picture huge. So if it's not exactly perfect, then it's not a huge deal because people won't be up close examining it like this. I mean, this is only 60%, but I'm going to size it down because I'm not going to really be displaying it huge. So it's not a huge deal. Um, let's see, what can we do now? Let's get rid of the tree branch. And what I'll do here is show you the content aware fill. And all I'm gonna do is select around the tree branch, right click, fill, content aware. There we go, it's gone. Didn't really have to do much. So that's that. Um, I'm not really liking the background too much, so let's see if we can find some cool clouds on Google Images. I don't really want anything crazy. I mean, that might be a bit much. It'd probably look pretty cool, though. Let's just go with this one right here and see how it looks. You can always get rid of it later. Now, if if you're making something that you're going to be selling to people, make sure you have permission to use stuff. Um, this is just a picture I'm editing for fun, so I'm not really worried about it. It's never going to be sold anywhere. I'm not trying to make money off of it, so Ooh, get rid of that. So let's bring this up here and we're going to scale it so it kind of fits. Usually use free transform. We're probably not going to have this extend into the water, so let's just have it about where the skyline is. And one thing we can do is, let's see if this works, I'm going to select the kind of white part right there and select the cloud layer again and basically what we're going to do is select inverse and then hit delete and in theory that should get rid of all the excess clouds that we don't need which it didn't so let's try it again delete oh there we go all right so obviously that looks kind of ridiculous it looks like i had her in front of a green screen and it also looks like i have no freaking clue what i'm doing if you were going to keep it like that, people would look at it and be like, what What on earth is that? I don't even know what you're doing. So we're going to figure out a way to kind of blend it in without it looking too weird. And usually what I'll do is I'll go through some different layer styles, which are these right here, and kind of see if there's one that fits the bill. Um, I don't really like any of them so far, but... Obviously, I have to play with the opacity a bit. Uh, hmm. I think what I'm going to do is leave it on overlay. Actually, never mind. Overlay won't work. Leave it on normal. And I'm going to bring it down and have it kind of match the background because it's already blown out a bit. I just wanted to add some, at least some kind of texture to the background. And what I'm going to do, since it looks kind of weird down here, I'm going to use my eraser, have it on a pretty soft edge, and bring the opacity down. And just kind of erase it until it fades in with the rest of the background. Kind of like that. So that, that looks fine to me. Um, as you can see, it's not a huge difference, but it, it adds a little bit to the picture. 
Um, so that's good. I think I'm going to get rid of these ducks too. They don't really need to be there. They don't add anything to the picture itself. So we're just going to go over them with the clone stamp. You can use the content aware if you want. You could probably even use the little um, spot healing tool too. It's really up to you. I prefer, like I said before, the clone stamp tool just because of the control behind it. Um, you know, let's also try getting rid of this spray paint. You might want it in there, you might not. Um, I'm going to try seeing what it looks like without it in there. So let's see if Content Aware will do that for us. Alright, so as you can see, it, it did a fair job. It, it doesn't look terrible to me, but one thing you can do to get it even better so it blends in with the, the rest of the rocks around it more is undo that, go back, and then instead of just selecting around it and leaving it, select around it, and then we're going to modify the selection and feather it. And that should help blend it in. We'll do it, we'll, we'll try it at 50 pixels and see what it looks like. And then we'll do the fill content aware again. Um, hmm. That's not bad. I guess it doesn't even look that much different than the first one, but whatever. It's gone. Um, it's not that noticeable. If you hadn't seen the before and after, I think no one would really notice that it was there or that you edited it right there. Uh, the All of the concrete in itself just looks kind of funky anyways, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. You could dive in deeper and kind of erase around the edges to get it blend to blend more, but I'm not really worried about it. Um, so what else can we do to this to make it better? Mm -hmm. Let's duplicate, uh, duplicate the layer. And I think we're going to try some kind of skin smoothing techniques. So what we're going to do is filter blur and surface blur. I'm sure there's other ways to do this. Do this. This is what I usually do. It's pretty simple. Um, forgive me if there's an easier way. I'm sure there is, but this is my tried and true method of doing it. So you can just basically play around with the settings. Some some different pictures might need it more than others. Um, that looks like it's enough to me. Actually, let's try it a little bit more and see what happens. Now, just so you're aware, if you do it again, you're adding on top of the existing surface blur that you already did. So just keep that in mind. All right, that's fine. So what I'm going to do now is you could make a mask to do all this stuff, but I'm just going to use the eraser tool. Um, I feel like that's a uh, pretty simple way to do it, and I'm not really worried about it. So basically what I'm going to do is anything that I don't really want the surface blur on, I'm just going to erase. Like I said, you can do this with like a masking tool too, um, but I don't really care. This works for me, so I'm just going to do it. Maybe we don't want it on her hair and her jacket because we want the fine details of that to come out. Basically, what, what the surface blur that I just did is just kind of, what would you call it? Basically, just closing up her pores. You won't really see them. You won't really see, like, any weird parts about her skin anymore. It kind of just blends them all together. And you definitely want to get rid of any bruises before you do that. It might. I think it's probably easier in the long run to get rid of those before, oops, whatever arm, before you do the surface blur. So. Now, one thing I'm not doing is zooming in and being really fine detailed about it. So if you if you're if you're doing a picture where you want it to be perfect, definitely zoom in 
and get every little spot kind of like this where you're getting really close get around the hair strands and this isn't really a close-up on her face but if it was it would be good to go back um, and kind of get rid of the surface blur around her eyes and stuff that you kind of want to pop um, you can play with the opacity a bit too so it's not overdoing it um, one thing too is that if this was a close-up of her face that I was doing instead of kind of a far away shot I definitely wouldn't do the surface blur as much as this this just looks kind of crazy to me it's a little over the top so I would tone it down a bit if you're doing a close-up because that just looks beyond fake um, so let's turn these back layers back on and get some of this out and let's see if we notice a difference at all we should so if you look at her leg right here, you can definitely see a difference. And you can see a spot that I accidentally erased right there. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. We'll just keep moving on. So that's that. Oops. And let's do a little quick before and after. So now I think what I'm going to do is we'll add a curve adjustment layer. And what's that, what that's going to do is kind of boost and drop some of the colors in the highlights and the shadows. And I usually do this kind of slight S curve on each color channel. And that ends up giving a pretty cool effect in my opinion. And here's a before and after. And now you can see the, the clouds are kind of blown out again. So... We'll go back and mess around with those some more. Might just be boosting up the uh, opacity a bit, which seems to be fine. And one thing I will do sometimes is use a light leak overlay or some kind of gradient. This one is one that you can find online for free. There's a ton of them. Just search light leak overlay and you'll find a ton of different stuff. So let's rotate that. Let's try it this way. And typically I'll set this to an overlay on the layer style. Oh no, that's not good. Um, I'm not really liking that. Let's do screen. Screen might be too much. We might erase some of it out of there. So we'll, let's leave it like that. And then what we'll do is use the eraser and get rid of some of the overly bright parts around here. So I had my caps lock on. That's why you couldn't see the circle. I'll put this at a low opacity and slowly just take away what we don't want. See how it kind of brings back her. I don't really want it to affect her very much. Alright. And then, you know what, let's try doing like a, a kind of grungy overlay. Maybe some scratches in the image. Let's try this one. Looks simple enough. Whoops, don't want to save it. Copy, paste it on top. And we'll free transform it to about the size. Enter. And one thing I'm going to do is because it, it 
it goes from a really white to a really black with a bunch of gray in between. So I'm going to just adjust the contrast, try to get it a little more like stark, just like that. And first let's try it as an overlay and it's going to blow her out. I know that already. Um, maybe screen. I might invert the colors on it actually. Yeah, let's try that. So we're going to invert the colors and basically what that did is just flipped it. So now it's mainly black instead of mainly white. decide which one I like better. I would say probably the screen. Yeah, let's leave it like that. And I don't really want the scratches all over her, honestly, so I'm going to go back just like I did with the light leak layer and just kind of erase them off her, because for me it's just way too distracting. I like how it's kind of grungy up here and tiny bit down here, but on her face and stuff and legs, it just, I don't know. I don't really like it too much. I think we're going to play around with that light, le light leak layer too, because I'm not really liking that either. I mean, it just doesn't really do much for me. So let's try try just doing a our own little gradient here real quick, and we'll just play around. We'll do this kind of purple to orange. And we'll start it from the top, going to the bottom. And let's let's start with overlay again, and bring it down quite a bit. Maybe we'll try screen. Mm, not really feeling it. Maybe overlay. We'll leave it on overlay, and just have it be kind of low. All right, so. There's that. We'll do a quick before and after again. Doesn't look too bad. I honestly think the clouds still kind of look cheesy, but there's no point of me going and finding another set of clouds. You guys can find that yourself and you understand how I did it. So it's, I mean, that's the point of a tutorial, understanding how to do something. Um, Obviously, it would be a lot harder if there was a background where there's a lot of stuff, which in that case, you'd probably want to go around here, go around her and erase the background out yourself. But other than that, here's this and let's let's do a quick uh, kind of vignette around her. And again with that, I'm going to select, modify, and feather it. And this time I'm going to feather it way more than I did before. So let's go like 150 pixels. And basically I'm just going to bring the paint bucket tool and drop in some black. First I'm going to invert the selection. And move that to black. All right. So from there, I'll go with overlay. No, I keep saying overlay. Usually it looks pretty good on a lot of stuff, but this one not so much. And we're just going to make that a slight, very slight vignette. I don't really want a lot. To me, that looks not bad. So we'll leave that there. And one thing I think I'll do. Let's go back here and maybe we'll dodge and burn some of her, some of the areas on her face a bit. And one thing you want to do here is keep this pretty low because it it can make some big changes quick 
before you even really notice what's happening like that see how ridiculous that is maybe we'll leave it on shadows for now just kind of go slowly and if you need to check back and forth to make sure you're not overdoing it because there are supposed to be shadows there I just don't want them so so obvious I'm not even doing it on the right layer. And then we can, maybe we'll do some burning to the shadows too. Certain areas kind of make it look, pop out a little bit more. So you can see it's not a huge difference, but it definitely adds to it. Let's go everything off. So that was the original image. And here it is again with everything. And let's do a quick one where it's layer by layer. So that was just get rid of the, getting rid of some of the stuff. That one was the kind of skin smoothing. This one is the bruises that used to be down here, which it doesn't really matter. This one, clouds. Curves, a little light leak that I'm not too sure I like anyways. A little gradient overlay. Scratches and stuff. And vignette. And that's it.